Hey everybody, welcome back. Nate here from WASD20. Welcome to part three of Tyranny. Last time, you may remember, I died miserably. <clears throat> and, uh, just because I wasn't paying attention to my health. And, uh, rookie mistake. And we'll carry on here. I'm gonna go ahead and beat the guys that beat me now. So let's continue. And uh, I'm gonna be skipping through a lot of this because, um, we already seen this. But, hopefully this time, there will be a better result. Here's our reinforcements. If you're wanting to actually read this dialogue, go watch part two. But we're going to engage in combat. Now, one of the big things that I didn't do last time was pay attention to this little, I guess, that thing right there, companion combos. Uh, when you have companions in your party, you are able to execute unique and powerful abilities called companion combos. These abilities allow two characters to act in concert to create a powerful effect. Try using the Blood Soak Stone combo ability against Tarkus Demos. I'm gonna try it. Uh, when a companion combo ability is activated, you will see that the icon above each character's head is set with the same ability. Okay. So, yeah, we're gonna try this here. The combo in this case is called Blood Soak Stone. So we're going to try it on this guy right here. And I'm going to keep an eye on the help this time. <clears throat> uh oh, it didn't work so well. Let's see what it says here. Uh, missed. Darn. Okay. Well, we'll carry on. Wow. Okay, she needs some health. Let's get that going. And... Okay, the other thing is there's this AI button. So right now I think because it's highlighted in blue I have it turned on. Um, let me right click on it. So right now it's, she's in defend party mode. Um, she needs to defend herself a little bit here. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to make a difference in this case. Okay. Yeah. I guess I can manually control her or I can let the AI do its thing. I can always pause and manually, manually control her, but I like that AI, AI option as well. So let's uh, see if we can get some damage on this guy here. Man. You got it. Okay, so he's burning, that's good. And let's try thrust. Will do. The thing I realized is the spear that I have now. She's got no potion, okay. This could be problematic. Gotta wait for that cooldown. Um oh okay, I have her stances here. Battle stance. That's another thing I realized. So I think this is what I want. Yeah, plus 20 to dodge. Meditative stance that focuses on dodging enemy attacks. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what we want. We want her to be a little bit more defensive here. Alright, let's... Um, see what we can't do here. I don't know. Just carry on, I guess. Okay, we're close to getting her potion. Why don't you pick on my guy a little bit? Just a little bit, okay. Ugh. Did I always have <sighs> Man. She's getting low on health already. When a party member takes damage, they will start to lose health. The health bar next to their portrait will start to decrease. When a party member's mental health drops low enough, they will gain a wound, and the health bar will turn red. Wounded characters have their maximum health reduced, and receive a penalty to all skills. Wounds are removed when the party resets, or when a character levels up. Okay, so we don't want... <coughs> Excuse me. Even though I think we already did, we don't want it to get down to the red zone. That's bad. Right now, it's, it's orange. But I think we might have already got it down to red previously. Of this much blood. Okay. 
Oh boy. Making me nervous. Okay, we got him. Now, let's turn our attention to this guy. And we need some... Could that be it for her? Could that be it? Okay, I think I have a protective potion too that maybe I should take. Let's see. I thought I picked something up. I'll have to mess with that scroll later. Maybe it was up here. Okay, I think I can close this now. Weird, I thought I had a protective potion. Maybe I didn't pick that up. Oh well, let's keep going. Okay. I think we'll be alright here. I'm hoping. Okay, let's knock you back. Get some lightning. Okay, that was good. This guy is wrecking down here. Look at that. Wow. I liked in uh, Dragon Age how you could like rotate around when you saw something like that. Um, that was one of my favorite things to do. But anyway, that's this is not Dragon Age. This game is cool though. I'm really digging it. Okay. You have a potion yet? Almost. <clears throat> you got it. She's gonna fire a flaming arrow. Whoa! Oh man, that's a cool effect. I like it. What are you doing? Okay, she's almost ready to attack. Okay. Got it. That was close. And I'm not even playing on... Like, I'm playing on medium easy here. It's my impression, at least. Come quick, we have a situation on the cliffside. They have the commander. What? They have the commander. Okay, I'll zoom back out here. So scroll wheel zooms in and out. Got some horde bracers. Let's see how these are. The commander can wait. Let me browse the loot. <clears throat> Whoop. So these look Recovery is not as good. Okay, so down there it gives us it's a summary. So plus one deflection recovery. So wait, less recovery is good? Because it's green, so I assume maybe that's good. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm taking it all either way. It's just a matter of will it be useful. definitely better than hers pretty sure and then deflection 9 as opposed to 7 recovery is the same precision goes up okay yeah go with that too all right So yeah, this spear that I have equipped is <clears throat> the javelin, rather. If we compare, you can see that the ranged attack is actually a little bit worse than the one I have equipped, but the melee is um, is better. So it's a trade-off. Um, but I'm going to stick with it. I am using the melee a lot because I'm using that thrust ability, and that gets me right up close. Just point me in the right direction. So, okay, we want the whole party here. I wonder if I can... Nope, gotta be over here. Okay. Right. There's gotta be a select all button for <clears throat> select party, but I won't look up the thing right now. Shortcut. Okay, so camp looks cool. Tense and just the environments are looking good. Here's that giant pool of blood. All right, Pelix Tyrell, stow your weapons or we find out how long a man screams before hitting the ravine down below. 
Cornered between a precipitous drop and a band of angry soldiers, the Oathbreaker warrior holds a disfavored officer at nice point. That Oathbreaker, I tell you. Drastus, skewer him! Worry not for me! Graven Ash will protect. The disfavored officer winces, blood seeping from the seams of his bracers and cuirass. Mocking Blaze, you heard the man. He plainly invited you to use that little blade of yours. What are you waiting for? Permission from your pimp? This blade, with a jerk of the knife, he slices off a clump of Drastus' matted hair. Not the hair! If you're so eager to see your ally dead, just step closer. Okay. I can't do my athletics. I really wish I had athletics 30. That's the second thing I've missed out on because I don't have high enough athletics. Release the prisoner and you might know the inside of a cell. Hmm. Let him die? Let's try it. Yes, let's see. Graven Ash protect him. The blood changer smirks, making slicing gestures with her hand across her neck. Hmm. Tyrell dashes the blade across Drastus' throat. Oh no, blood gushes out from the commander's neck. I guess I should not be that surprised. Uh, drowning out his final words, Tyrell points the bloody knife toward you. Death to Kairos! Death to Ar Archons! Mm-hmm. Typical. The moment Drastus' body falls to the ground, the disfavored soldiers pounce forward, quickly reducing the Oathbreaker to a bloody mess. Man. Both dead. Hey, more loot. All right, Drastus' death will be a setback. He was a fine steward of his steadfast. Aurora swallows her lips, pursed in anger. But the loss of the losses we've sustained in this war, I'm the next in command. I will aspire to be half the leader Drastus was. One of the soldiers found some mage blather on the Oathbreakers. Aurora holds up a rolled sheaf of parchment. I figured you being trained in letters could perhaps... Aurora looks down at the papers, her face blushing, and quickly thrusts the sheaf towards you. I'm going to examine this parchment. Repeating the same messages in different written scripts, the parchment explains the Vendrian guards' desire to overthrow Kairos' archons and rout their enemies from the tears. The pages aren't addressed to any specific reader, but rather openly invites all who remain loyal to the young, younger realms to gather at Vendrian's well. Recruitment Material There were likely other groups trying to flee the valley, but we can rest knowing we've stopped this group. A shame it is such, such, at such a high cost. The Archons are expecting you at the disfavored war camp. When you are ready to leave, exit by the southeast gate and keep going that way through the foothills. Southeast gate. Remember that, okay? Remind me if I forget. End conversation. They're running off in a hurry. Okay. So, you know, story-wise, so far we've got these two factions. Ooh. And, um... What are they? The Disfavored and the Crimson Horde, I think? And those are both Kairos' armies. And I'm kind of, like, courting them both or something? Is what I'm maybe getting? Um... And then, uh, and then you've got the Oathbreakers, and I think that's the Vendrian Guard, is the, kind of like the local army that's resisting, maybe, or rising up. A little confusing, but I think that's what's going on. Let's talk to this dude. The prisoner, oh, we're talking to her. The prisoner is from the Tarkas clan. Uh, then he's not just any Oathbreaker. He's one of their leaders, Aurora signals to her men by dragging his hand across her neck. No mercy for those who foment rebellion. Find a post and string him up. If his wounds don't kill him, thirst and starvation and infection will do the rest. All must be given a chance to find absolution in the service of the Scarlet Chorus. The mage points a finger at the disfavored officer. Wait, is Mocking plays a female? I can't even tell. And you know full well this has always been our way. He, was a, he has a chance to be a slave, a soldier. Only do we feed him to the pigs. Only then do we feed him to the pigs. I tire of this nonsense. You keep recruiting these Oathbreakers, and then you'll fail to inflict order, and they defect. And we have to fight them all over again. I will not let another one of these 
South knobs come back to haunt us. South knobs, I love it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that to the vocab list here. Let me just write that down. South knobs, work that in to my daily, my daily lingo. Okay. Well, I insist the Oathbreaker be taken to the voices of Narat, leaving us at an impasse. Unfortunately, we have a fate binder here to, se or fortunately, we have a fate binder here to settle the matter for us. Ooh, ooh me, me. The Chancellor, Chanter turns to you, an expectant smile creeping across her face. So, what say you? What should become of this prisoner? Execute, or the Corps should be allowed its chance to recruit the new warriors. Oh boy, that's tough. Excuse me. Um, execute. It seems more practical to me. I don't know. It just seems more practical. The other, you know, Aurora makes a good point. Happily, this one will pay for the Dras for Drastus and all my other brothers and sisters that perished here in Vendrian's well. Aurora nods to a nearby warrior. You heard the fate binder. Kill him, but make an example of him. Find a post that's not in use and string him up. Aurora gives you a solemn nod. Until next time, fate binder. I will. Ha I know you have important business in the valley. No point in keeping you. She snaps to salute. For the glory of Kairos. Indeed. For the glory of Kairos. Will do. Kairos ain't no south knob. That's for sure. Mm, looks like a gem. Agate. Agate. Alright, let's look at some of this stuff here. <clears throat> so this thing... Let's just see if she can wield it. I don't know. Two-handed weapons require... So what if I... Got rid of these... Okay, now that's... <coughs> I mean, I don't know if it's any better. I just want to see. Okay. So, 8, 12, 11, 14, 18. Okay, I should have actually kept both of them here and see if it tells me, gives me a comparison with both of them. So, 8 to 11, 8 to 11, 4.04. DPS on my Gut Seeker and Red Rivers, and then on the Honor Guards, Bronze Falks. It's hard for me to tell if uh, that accounts for. Yeah, I feel like these are faster. I'm going to stick with these just because I'm not quite sure. What else do we have here? Oh, character sheet. Cool. Oh, okay. This is the talent tree. Oh, wow. My main guy's got... Oh, wow. Yeah, cool. Can't wait to dig into some of this, these upgrades. That'll be fun. Uh, let's see what else. Quests. Okay. Okay, Scarlet Chorus. So, my favor is low. My wrath is meh, getting there. With the disfavored, my favor is high. Okay, yep. Scarlet Chorus, that's what it is, not Scarlet Horde. And the Vendrian Guard are the... Okay, so yeah, this makes me think that I will have a chance to kind of turn against Kairos even, maybe. If I can earn favor with the Vendrian Guard. Yeah. Okay, so she's loyal to... Oh, this is my loyalty with her. <laughs> okay. Voices of Nerat. Spell creation. I heard about that. That'll be fun. Alright. Oh, I don't want to read this now. Spells are created using two and one. To begin creating a spell. Uh, okay, I will read this now. Select the core sigil for the type of magic followed by an expression sigil to determine what form of the spell takes. For example, if you want to create a fireball spell, you would select the sigil of flame as its core, followed by the sigil of directed force to determine its shape. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Spells have default names based on what you selected core, based on the selected core and expression. 
You can rename your spells using the spell interface. Each sigil requires a certain amount of lore skill to learn and control. Characters must have a lore skill at least equal to the spell's total difficulty in order to cast a spell. So assign spells. Once you've created a spell, use the assign button to add that spell to one of your active party members. You can assign a spell to more than one character. If you want to modify the spell later, after you've discovered more sigils, select the spell from the party member you wish to modify. The interface will populate with that spell's formation, allowing you to modify, and it saves your changes. Searing Palm. You can customize your spells selecting different icons. You can create multiple you create multiple spells using the same core and expression, but with different accents. These icons can help you differentiate your spells. Huh. Interesting. Each spell has a default name, but you can customize your spell's name to reflect the accents you've added to the spell. Some accent sigils allow you to modify the area of effect or range of your spells. When you use these sigils, the casting UI will display the increased range as a second, more transparent area beyond the base of the area of the spell. Okay. So I don't think I can do anything there yet. <laughs> I'll probably have to revisit that. Alright. Um, we're going to get going here. So southeast. Yeah, it seems like the right way. Oh, okay. Sorry, I can't. There we go. Down here. <clears throat> hey, man. Kairos should never, should not have accepted the Vendrian surrender. Okay. Careful under the portcullis. Cursed thing is near, rusted through. Oh, here he is. You there, mutting through a mouthful of congealed blood. Tarkus demo sanctioned mistake. End this, I beg you. But you make a better warning to others while you're still twitching. Unable or unwilling to muster the strength to reply, the Oathbreaker turns away, wincing in pain. I don't want to end him quickly. I don't want to be that guy. I'm, I just showed up. I'm a little bit worried about my rep reputation with these people. It's true. Trust me, I wanna, I wanna end it for you, buddy. But no. All right, sorry guys, I'm in a like, I'm, <laughs> I'm in a crazy mood right now. All right, um, Edgering Ruins. That's where we are now, and this favorite camp is where we need to go. Okay, so that compass was the map symbol. Oh, the globe takes us out to the wider map. Love this map. It's just it's so heavily stylized. I think I've said that before, but this looks like a calendar. Show map names. I don't know. Okay. So I don't think we can go over here. Oh, okay. I can move around, though. That's cool. Haven. <clears throat> Alright, well, here we are. The disfavored camp. That's where we want to go. I accept three hours of travel. All right, we are here. <clears throat> Control lightning plus one, athletics plus one. So I got some kind of levely, levely things leveled up a bit. All right, let's go see what's going on over here. This looks like it has potential to be a fight. Take what you can carry, but leave the cart. Otherwise, we seize you and your wares. This is robbery! Crescent Runner. Hail, Fate Binder! The disfavored scout not or <laughs> the disfavored scout nods at your approach. Camps up on, on up ahead. Don't mind us, just clearing out the rabble. I still don't understand what I've done to a f I still don't understand what I've done to a fan. I'm getting confused with my voices, guys. I just gotta stop the voices. <laughs> I respect that these are now disfavored lands, but I'm happy to give the Legion a proper toll. But she's going on about the trading rights. What nonsense is that? I'm not allowed to trade one thing for another. It's not like I'm selling weapons to angry peasants or anything of the sort. You're on disfavored land. These warriors have every right to kill you. 
This is none of my concern. I don't have... I'm above this stuff. Deal with it. Crescent Runner, right you are. We'll take care of this vulture. The Crescent Runner nods to you with a knowing smile. You mean you guys get the feeling I'm copping out a lot on some of this stuff? I am. On it. But, you know, trying to roleplay a little bit, you know, what? how would I act? Uh, verse. Slow down a moment. I know we're both eager to watch the Archons bicker over tactics like a pair of magpies, but I need to ask you something first. What's that? The voices in Vinarat told me that you came as a mediator. Considering the source, well, I can't help but feel I'm only hearing half the story. So let's have it out. What's so special about you? Hmm. You know what? We just fought and almost died together. We did die together once, but don't don't tell anybody that. You don't know about that. I've gained loyalty with first because I told her the truth. Okay, so I'm bringing the edict, which is apparently some kind of hugely destructive spell. It's kind of the impression I got, like like a nuclear weapon, an edict, you know, like a nuclear weapon. Uh, that makes a crazy kind of sense, considering how long the siege has taxed the armies. I can understand why Kairos would send you with an edict to speed things along. Have you read it? Do you know what it says? The Archons must claim Ascension Hall by Kairos' Day of Swords or all will perish. This is not for you to know, I'll say. If you're telling the truth, I suppose I'll hear about it soon enough anyway. She nods. Why so suspicious? It's just a feeling I got when the Archons are together. The air gets taut as a bowstring. I can't help think that no amount of compromise will get them seeing eye to eye. So why invite a mediator from Tunan's court? It doesn't add up. I really ought to be meeting with the Mark, with the Archons. The war tent is just past the center of camp. She nods toward the northwest. One last thing, be careful around these disfavored types. They take their work seriously, and most have suffered too many blows to the head. Sorry, I can't. Let's talk, shall we? Stone Shield says, well, look at you. Our gatecrasher from the court is still in one piece. The guard pounds his chest. Uh, chest plate and salute. Welcome to disfavored camp. Always happy to have an honored ally pay us a visit. Salute. Graven Ash protects. That he does, the warrior nods in approval, then taps twice in the gate to signal, signal your arrival. Be well, Fatebinder. Glory to Kairos. Hmm, addendum added the Conqueror's Will. Not quite sure what that's all about. Zoom back out here. Okay, quite the camp. Hail to you, Guardian of the Law. The man dressed in merchant banner greets you with a smile. If you have a few excess rings weighing you down, best unburden yourself before battle. Let me see your wares. Hmm, let's try that. Told him my father was in the biz. Don't try to mess with me. His supplies are all perfectly ordinary. You see nothing out of place or unauthorized by this mercantile license. I could try to steal something. Not gonna. Everything seems to be in order here. Farewell. Travel well, and I'll be here should you need to trade again. Pentabore. End conversation. Okay. So, this is the disfavored camp. Um. Oh, move my map around here.
This guy looks like an executioner or something. Oh. Nope. Glory to the voices of Narat projecting his sal salutation for all to hear. The grinning blood chanter wraps his staff against the ground as you approach. Phage binder Valosk, I presume? His smile quickly retreats, giving way to a sour scowl. I am bitter quip. I am here as the emissary of the Scarlet Chorus. What is it like working with the disfavored? Okay, farewell. Bitter quip nods as you depart. What a name, bitter quip. Okay, guys, well, I think that this is a good place to end this one, uh, and I'm going to keep on exploring the camp here, and hopefully we will get to meet with the Archons or the Voices of Nerat, or I think it's the Archons. If you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you let me know, give me a thumbs up, uh, leave me a comment down below, I'd love to hear from you. If you're playing Tyranny and also watching alongside, I'm always open to tips. What do you think of the game? Are you enjoying it? All that good stuff. All right. See you in the next one.